not only were there new nations being created and, and new movements following this World War I time period, but there was also a crisis facing many peoples. And this came from new ideas, oftentimes. So while these new ideas were challenging people in political and economic ways in this period between the wars, there were also new ideas in many other areas. In science, uh, people like Albert Einstein were challenging previously held ideas about matter and physics, changing um, the way science was, was being viewed. In psychology, Sigmund Freud challenged ideas about people's behavior choices and how brain function occurred. In literature, writers like T.S. Eliot and James Joyce uh, portrayed an attitude of disillusionment over realities uh, as created by the catastrophe of World War. In philosophy, the existentialist movement started to create a sense of what is the meaning of life and is there no meaning. In art, uh, surrealism um, created and linked that dreams and reality have a coexistence. Um, there was also a great uh, ability to portray emotion through sharp angles with uh, artists like Picasso. In music, alternative beats and rhythms were created uh, to express oneself, uh, jazz was was a was a new way of expression musically. Uh, in society, there was pushes for uh, new movements of women's suffrage, and success was actually being seen there. In technology, inventions like the automobile, the airplane, the radio, and even movies, which weren't brand new, began to really become dominating features uh, in people's lives. So, with democratic nations increasing in number and many uh, having multiple political parties competing for power, the coalition government becomes a necessity. A coalition government occurs when there's many uh, opportunities for, for different parties, for different groups to own seats at the government table and thus there is no real, real need or no ability to achieve a majority. You need a majority of seats, a majority of votes to run a government. So a coalition is going to be without a majority. So parties have to work together and create this uh, agreement or compromise government. Um, coalitions are by nature very unstable because whatever is separating these political parties um, to keep them from becoming one political party obviously could be a real mark of uh, division if that, if that issue becomes problematic. So frequent changes in power as a result of these uh, coalition governments falling apart is uh, not going to be able to build lasting results, uh, positive results, both politically and economically. Uh, a great example of how governments were almost set up to fail in this light would be Germany's Weimar Republic, which was unintentionally set up to fail as the nation's debt and restrictions followed by or set up by the Treaty of Versailles. The response was overprinting money to pay your bills. Not a good idea. This is going to be followed by extreme inflation, hyperinflation, if you will, and a near economic collapse, rampant unemployment, a lot of dissatisfaction, a lot of attitude of hopelessness. Uh, nations like the United States are going to try to help out with programs like the Dawes Plan, uh, debt forgiveness, uh, low interest loans. This is going to have very limited success, however. Also, idealistic approaches to eliminate conflict with events like the kellogg Briam Pact. This is going to be an attempt to make war illegal. Uh, over 25 nations will enter into this kellogg Briam Pact saying that uh, war now is the, really trying to eliminate war from the face of the earth. A very idealistic approach, but not very, um, very likely, not very pragmatic. Thus, it lacks the legitimacy. So, any economic prosperity exhibited by nations during this post-World War I era, and there was some. The United States definitely uh, felt some economic prosperity in the 1920s, uh, had been built upon shaky principles and thus became targets for destructive economic forces. Um, banks were going to struggle to get the capital back from loans, and when they don't get the money back from the loans, people will lose confidence, and economic systems are really built upon that principle of confidence. Um, these become the beginnings of a domino effect event that will spiral into economic calamity. Wealth had been built upon stocks and was unevenly distributed. So the rich were getting richer, uh, but there was not really an equal distribution of this throughout the society. 
and this was dependent on the, ri the rise of stock prices. So as long as stock market prices were climbing, uh, the wealth would continue to grow. Um, much of it was bought on margin. Uh, you would buy the stock really on, on money that you had borrowed uh, if you were an investor and then as long as the prices went up you could sell the stock for a higher price, pay off your loan and still make a profit. As long as the prices go up it really works but as the confidence falls and the prices begin to fall there's no money now to pay off those loans, the banks need the capital back and people begin to panic. Uh, the foundational economic backbone of, of agriculture is not going to be there to support any stumbles. Better technology and techniques are going to mean higher production of foods, even overproduction. And this is going to drive prices down. Now they're not going to be able to pay off their loans. If you know anything about farming, they operate very largely on taking out loans out from banks and then paying it off with the harvest. So uh, poor environmental conditions that just happen to also run right into this, uh, this issue here is going to really be a chain of events. Um, so uh, the money, not being able to get the money back from the loans, either from the farmers or the investors, is going to set banks off into a domino of closing. This run on banks is going to be difficult to overcome. Uh, with confidence loss, the stock market is going to tumble in October 1929, and the ensuing run on banks for money will lead many to shut down. Uh, many people, that's where their life savings were, and that was their only uh, security fund. So the cyclical chain of events will not only deepen the problem, but also make the, solu the solutions to it much more difficult to find. There's really nowhere to turn. So when you don't have anywhere to turn, you, you turn to whoever has the, you know, preaching the best answer at hope.